lay in my flat uh, straight edge from the tip of the stem to the very end of the stem. It's like straight as an, an arrow. I couldn't believe it. That's ready to go. Oh, same with the transom knee. Disassembled it. Uh, you can see the epoxy line running down the center. Epoxied it and reassembled it. Um, transom, making some pretty good progress on it. We got the motor board cut out, uh, all drilled and countersunk and epoxied down. So that's done. Uh, this is the floor timber for frame five and a half. I got all my holes drilled in it. Um, started cutting out the frame for around the transom. As you can see, mahogany frame. Um, they are drilled and screwed, countersunk, but I haven't epoxied them down yet because I'm still in the fitting process. And, uh, and things are fitting very nicely, as you can see. There's one joint. And we'll come over to this side. And here's the other joint. It's just turning out really nice. Of course, none of this stuff is sanded yet. It's just all rough fit. Um, if you look at, let me come to the side here. Look at the angle. You can see that I beveled this at 10 degrees to match the transom. So anyhow, still got to pick up another piece of mahogany to finish this and frame five and a half. But we're making darn good progress. Now we're talking. Now it's starting to look like something. I, uh, I went ahead and I got frame four and frame two threaded onto the setup mold. Um, and after I did that, I officially five screwed all of the legs. I double checked to make sure that my my uh, longitudinals, my main frame for the setup, were still level, uh, left to right and front to back. Uh, and then, of course, I, I five screwed all of the legs down. Um, I've got the transom just sitting up here. I still need to pick up the piece of mahogany to finish the bottom of the transom, as well as a piece of mahogany to build frame five and a half which will be right here. Basically, it's the last frame in the setup. But uh, it's really, really, it's turning out nice. Everything's lining up right. Everything's measuring squarely. Well, I guess I should say everything's measuring the same. There's not a whole lot on a boat that's square. Um, one thing I did in the last uh, day or so, I took the transom knee, and I, I really like the way that Ted Gothier countersunk his bolts, his carriage bolts, the, the nut side of it. So I did the same thing. I, I drilled my holes into the transom knee and then I countersunk so that the, the head of the nut will be, uh, it's about a half inch deep, so the head of the nut will be just below flush of the surface here. Uh, and it turned out really nice. Oh, what else? The keel, which is the center member, which runs right through here, uh, attaches to the transom, runs from the transom through frame two, through frame four. It is, it should be flat. It should be level, um, parallel to our setup runners here. It should be perfectly parallel and flat. Um, from this point on, frame four ahead to the stem, we'll get down where you can see it. It's at a slight angle, so that keel actually curves down to meet right into the stem. And I took a spare set, a uh, spare piece of 1x4 I have laying on the floor there and I threw it up there just to test and everything looks like it's, it fits really, really well. Um, so, so far so good. Not looking too shabby. It's starting to look like something. Uh, the stem and breast hook, they're just mocked up. They're just sitting here. Um, I've got some blocks here just roughly setting the space the height of my breast hook. Nothing screwed down, nothing's official. Just mocking up and checking how everything's fitting. So far, so good. Uh, it is really, really turning out nice. All right, so it's September 1st. We put in 16 and a quarter hours in August on the zip build. Um, we got our totals running, so we're at 31 hours total into the zip build and four hundred and eighty nine dollars and ninety eight cents invested and i'll try to keep these updated with each video so i can show you where we're at so here we go did a, a few more things on the zip build over the course of the last few days uh... one of those was i drilled my holes in the stem and they are countersunk underneath just like the uh... like the transom knee is um, for the nuts so again the carriage bolts go in from the top 
they'll be countersunk into the keel, and then the nut side will be countersunk, or is countersunk, I'm sorry, on the bottom of the stem. Uh, one other thing I did, the frames, frame two, and, I'm sorry, frame four and frame two are officially attached to the setup mold. You can see the screw right there and right there. So the frames, they're, they're solid now. They're officially part of the mold. Of course, after everything's built and you do the flip, you'll remove these screws. Same over here on frame four. Screw there, screw there. So you'll remove those screws and then the hull will come loose from our setup mold. But anyhow, I got the, uh, got the frames officially plumb, true, leveled, and screwed down. They, they are there. Um, one thing I did also, I changed. These are 21 inch spreaders and their job is not only to attach your frames to the setup mold, but they also keep the distance 18 inches from this main longitudinal rail to this rail. So they keep that spread at 18 inches inside, but they also provide an attachment place for your frames. So I changed those out. The Glen, L Glen L setup mold actually called for one by six, which is actually closer to three quarter by five and a half. And I, I just didn't think three quarter, which would be half of this thickness, I, I just didn't like that. I went to two by six because it gives you an inch and a half to screw into, and it just seems more solid. So I changed out those spreaders. Um, again, I'm, I'm not modifying the boat plans whatsoever. I'm just making sure that my setup jig or mold is incredibly stiff. So same on this one. It's now a two by six. And uh, they're all screwed down. Everything's official. Something else that I did, um, you can see now that I cut into my plywood gussets. Um, this, of course, is for the chine. Down below is for the shear. Uh, so I got those cut. I just took my multi-tool and followed what was already cut into the frame. So I did that. Uh, all four sides of both frames. All four corners, I guess I should say. And when I glued my plywood gussets on here, I let them stick up just a hair, both on the bottom, which is now the top, if that makes sense, the hole's upside down, and also on the sides. I let them stick out just a hair, about a sixteenth of an inch, both side and bottom. So what I did was, after I got this cut, I came back with my belt sander and I fared this, uh, basically just the high spots, or the, the plywood that was sticking up just a hair, fared it down to match the frame, and same on the sides. So it's a really good fit. Everything is turning out super nice. I did the same down here. And I did that on all four corners. So here's a look at this one. And it's turning out really good. Making good progress. We'll see you on the next zip update. Please rate and comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A uh, shout out to Glenn L. Again, fabulous company. Check out their website at glennl.com or glenn-l.com. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.